Hi, this is Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, and uh, this particular lesson we're going to go over three different parts that came across my bench in the last week or so. Uh, one of my goals here is we for the members we've been doing this uh, these Zoom calls. Uh, about the mold baking. The only issue I have with doing that is that nobody out there in the group is, um, is a mold maker for the most part. So I'm not getting a lot of questions because they're not doing that all day. But a lot of you guys do make parts, all right? So uh, my whole thing with parts has always been setups and inspection. Uh, I, the machining part's fine too, but because my job is to just run two or three, I'm usually not uh, optimizing things for a thousand parts, all right? So it's in and out, quick in and out. So uh, we're gonna go over three parts today uh, that I think you'll find uh, very informative from an inspection standpoint and also from a um, setup standpoint. So let's get going. All right, so there it is, all right? A little bronze valve stem. Got an 80 thousandths hole in the end with a flat bottom on it, half inch deep. Point, actually, 0 .505 deep, plus or minus two on that. We'll talk about how we're gonna check that. Briefly show you how I machine this little 30 second wide uh, key slot at the bottom. Uh, that is uh, an eighth inch deep. And then, of course, we're gonna talk about how we check this theoretical dimension at 213 thousandths diameter on a 45 degree angle down to the back plus or minus one thousandths. All right, let's start with a uh, reproduction of the actual drawing. It would probably uh, be a not a good idea for me to actually scan the customer's drawings in. This is a rather old drawing, 1960, June of 1960. So it's as old as I am. Well, about uh, five months younger than I am, all right? So let's take a look at the, this uh, drawing here. It's a five sixteenths pin. That's all they call it out as. I just, uh, AutoCAD, just, I, did, I didn't feel like changing it to fractions, so I put the actual uh, three, 12 and a half uh, thousandths diameter. Uh, a 213 theoretical diameter that they want to hold this 2.639 dimension plus or minus one. You know, I posted this on Facebook, and a lot of guys said, you know, that's kind of a BS dimension. You know, it kind of is. I get what they're doing. This probably fits into some uh, seat, and at that particular diameter of the seat, they want that dimension. You know, if you held a 45-degree angle right, you could just do it back to this point, but whatever. That guy wanted to prove a point that day, I guess, but that's an interesting way to dimension it because it sets up a whole different way of checking it. But uh, let's take a look at that. So that's a, a quick uh, peek. Uh, you already saw the little video, but um, it gives you an idea. Almost three inches long there. And uh, the big thing here, too, as you can see, well, if we go back to this one, there's also a little slot at the end. And if we go back to this slide, you can see we got a little hole here to drill, all right? So let's go back to the drawing again. Uh, this is the big deal. So um, let's move forward. This uh, comes to me. The diameter's finished. And all of this end detail is finished. The uh, angle, the tip, everything's done. But they leave me 20 thousandths on this end. So uh, I got to get this end, grind this in, or however I'm going to do it, to hold this. Uh, and this end, as again, they, they, they've left me 20 thousandths there. So how am I going to do that? You know, in our shop, they think you can mill everything plus or minus one. But, uh, you know, that's pretty tight to repeat. So I thought I'd try and grind it, and uh, if you've seen any of my videos, um, I have really good luck with these old cup wheels. They're just very rough, and they're free cutting, and depending on the material, this just peeled off like butter. It really worked out well. So let's take a look at that setup there. Um, just a standard cup wheel here. You'll see the guard isn't on there because the wheel protrudes outside of the guard. So uh, if that offends you, um, I'm sorry, but that's the way we have to do it sometimes. So I've got a little grinding vise set up here, a little stop here. You can see I slide the pin in to the stop, and that's how I grind it, all right? And here's another look at it from the side. You can see I've got a two-inch parallel in here uh, to back this vise up away from the, uh, from the stop because the wheel is a little too wide to put it right up against the stop. But again, uh, the pin is held in the vise and up against this stop. So the question is, how are we going to check this? So I start taking a skim off this thing, but what we need here is the sign bar. Okay? And uh, 
for those of you who have been a member for a while, you probably got this uh, sidebar. Maybe hopefully you built this one. This is what I built, gosh, about 40 years ago when I was an apprentice. Uh, stayed after work and uh, jumped on the pantograph and engraved it. And of course, they added a little uh, lettering there to make it uh, uh, a little prettier, right? Uh, engraved it and added some paint to it. So uh, now we've got the sign bar tipped up at 45 degrees because that's the angle on the part. Okay, let's look at that again. I didn't put that on there. My mistake. Okay, that is a 45 degree angle. So I've tipped this up at 45 degrees, but the secret here is to put this pin in here. I need to know what it is from here to here, and the easiest way to check that is they call it a roll. I would call it a pin, but it's just a quarter inch dowel pin. Well, then I just took, I'm an AutoCAD now. And I just took that pin and rotated that at 45 degrees. And for those of you who are familiar with AutoCAD, I copied the whole thing with a base point right there. All right. Well, then I do the whole thing. There's my sign bar. There's the gauge blocks. And I copied and pasted that, th the, that point right in the corner. Now, a quick check. I used a digital height gauge to get this 1 inch 330 dimension up from the surface plate to here. Now, um, that was close enough, but then I got the gauge blocks out and confirmed that. I know it's 1 inch 330 thousandths from this plane to the top of that ball. Very important. Once I know that, uh, then I basically can lay this out. So basically I just drew a line from that pin over and then offset it 1 inch 330 and just drew this quick service plate in here. And then everything becomes crystal clear from that point. We're tilted up at 45 degrees. We know what it is from here to here. That way I could draw this line, insert the pin, and it's very simple in AutoCAD to go right to that point. All right. It doesn't matter about that theoretical diameter. It's a 45 set on a flat plane. So that's my dimension I'm looking for. All right. So um, if we move on to the next slide, that's what it looks like on the bench. Uh, that's me with the uh, gauge block set up there. Now let's look at this setup. A little bit going on here. Got my sign bar set up and it's a little tippy, right? And we're teed up here pretty high and I've got these gauge blocks and these aren't square. These are little rectangular ones. And uh, you know, if you bump anything here, everything wants to fall apart. So this is an old uh, brown and sharp squaring block. I bought this several years ago on eBay. Uh, it's a great piece for inspection. So it's, uh, it's uh, magnetic. So that holds everything together on this end. And then I just put a magnet here. Okay. Now this piece is non-magnetic, but at least it gives me a stop along the back edge. And I can't reach in there right now. I want to, but picture my thumb about right here and my forefinger here, just gently pushing the, uh, the uh, part against the magnet and then everything rests down on the stop. And that's how we check it. All right. And so, uh, let's see here. Before I go to the next one, that's another view of it. All right, so uh, let's take just a second and I can show you what that looks like in video format. All right, so the background noise is eliminated. This is me on the surface plate. There's my sign bar set up. There's the uh, valve stem here. Got the gauge block set up to the right height. And you're going to see I'm going to uh, come over here and uh, double check against my gauge block here that uh, we got a zero. All right, well, I think I'll get rid of that glare in just a second here so you can see it there we go and uh, we're set at zero then we have to roll it over the highest point on the valve stem uh, angle there you gotta roll it back and forth until you find the high point all right and then we're set at zero so that's uh, the most accurate way to check that dimension is right there So here's the part that came across my bench the other day. You can see I've got this about the nine inch diameter flange from the lathe department. Um, outsides turned up, insides turned up. Check with the lathe department to make sure uh, they machine these concentric. That's good. That'll come in handy later. But we've got this pipe welded to the whole thing. And these two holes that I'm going to machine need to be uh, in line with this slot. So what does that look like? Well. When I first got this part, I was really hoping that this slot would be a nominal dimension, and uh, it is inch and three quarter. Perfect. Now I just need to find something an inch and three quarter uh, wide or in diameter to put on my table. 
which I did find a piece of inch and three quarter uh, diameter stainless. If we take a look at this uh, drawing there's, or this photo, a lot going on here. Uh, two, four, six blocks with some parallels lined up. Uh, we'll see that in a second. The big thing I want you to learn from this, they're, they're clamped to the table against these dowel pins. You can't see the second one back here, but notice the bushing. And the bushing has an eighth inch, uh, has an eighth inch wall that pushes it away from these studs. Um, a lot of people will use a, a half inch dowel, half inch uh, stud. I'm always afraid these aren't perfectly straight. And as I tighten these, that uh, if we're not using the bushings, we're going to push the rod away from the dowel pins. So I like a little space between the stud and the dowel pin that's aligning it. All right. So uh, that's what it looks like uh, from another view. And you can see I'm just clearing the table there. And uh, about by a sixteenth of an inch, that's good enough. But because uh, I don't, I don't know how flat that is. I don't want to bottom out on that. If that hadn't worked out, I would have just had to put thicker parallels up here to get this just a little further off the table. Now, another thing I want you to notice here is uh, that uh, I use these uh, jacks a lot for my setups uh, versus uh, step blocks. A lot faster, a lot easier. If you bump one, you don't have to reset four blocks up. You just put the thing back up there. Uh, these are a, piece of, a couple pieces of uh, one by two by three inch cold roll on each end. I use those for other setups, but they just jacked everything up perfectly. And the other thing I want you to notice here are these uh, eighth inch uh, pieces of aluminum to keep my clamps from marring and digging into the part and leaving a mark. Uh, that's a good professional thing to learn. When you have a nice finish like this, the last thing you want is two clamp marks in it. You find yourself some half inch by eighth inch uh, um, aluminum, cut them up into one inch strips, cut a couple dozen of them, and you'll have them for a lifetime. The only reason you'll lose them is once in a while you'll blow them away when you're checking the part with the air nozzle, okay? So uh, each part had to be indicated in, all right, because uh, I could hold the part pretty c close on the x axis because of this, but uh, I could slide that thing back up and forth all the time. I only had eight parts to do, but I thought there's got to be a way to hook up a stop here, right? So I did. I, I, I just found a piece of a uh, half inch rod and just put it in the, one of these half inch dowel pins on the holes on the table. It wasn't perfect, but it got me within about three thousandths every time. I still re-indicated each part in, but it wasn't way off. Okay, it got me very close. So that was just a, a jury rig thing to do. So busy, busy setup for eight parts. Somebody happened to walk by and said, that looks like a real pain in the rear end. It was, but it, I took lots of pictures. So next time I do it, uh, it won't be quite uh, as difficult it was as it was the first time and the final setup part we're going to look at in this lesson is this large flange about a foot in diameter here all right this comes to me turned up from the lathe department if we look at the side shot of this uh, you can see it's got a nice lip on it here about a half inch thick it's actually 475 thousandths thick all right and let's we go back to this uh, slide got us drill a series of holes around this uh, lip here okay 18 millimeter and 14 millimeter so how are we going to hold this thing well you know uh, this is my first rodeo with these flanges so back to the sub table uh, for my Kurt vice all right and what I've got here is a stud right in the middle and notice these two socket head cap screws well, what are they there for well let's take a look at the next slide and you can see all I'm doing with that is using those to locate the, the part on the table every time. Now, it would be nice to use dowel pins, but as you can see, a, a typical of my sub tables, every inch and a half, we have a, th a screw thread, a half inch dowel pin reamed hole, screw thread, reamed hole, screw thread. In this particular case, uh, to get the spacing about right, um, I ended up with um, screw thread. So, what's the difference, right? I know it looks much more uh, sexy when the uh, uh, there's dowel pins in that hole, but the, these uh, socketed cap screws will do the same thing. And uh, this is what it looks like uh, as we back off. And uh, so now I've got this uh, stud in the middle. This will locate it, all right? So I can tram this whole thing in, get it on zero, right? But how are we going to clamp this down? Well, this is the uh, best thing, these big sea washers I have made up. Uh, this particular one, I put a big chamfer on it because there's another flange I do uh, where the holes are much closer to the sea washer and I have to put a chamfer on the tool on the, on the hole and sometimes the chamfering tool if I'm not perfectly li lined up was nicking the outside so I just cleared it with a big chamfer. Now the beauty of the sea washer is is that if this stud isn't perfectly on center uh, 
uh, on the on the y-axis here you can adjust the sea washer back and forth now I just put I did eyeball this up uh, to just kind of line up with the o-ring okay and everything comes out right so the big deal with this is you're going to see a little video after this presentation um, after it's done you got all these holes and then they've got a chamfer called out so you'll see in the video I go through the carbide chamfering tool and put a one millimeter chamfer on all the holes and then I used to pull this thing off and then have to flip it over and hand chamfer all the holes in the back well I kind of got tired of doing that so I put a cycle in there to uh, back countersink and uh, it's really nice to just pull these off the machine and it's done just put it on the skid right and this is what the holes look like when they're done on the back side and I'll show you the tool here it's this little um, chamfer tool and it's a, got a 3 8 shank and a 3 8 uh, diameter 45 degree here okay and you can use both sides of that you can use the top or you can use the bottom all right of that 45 you do have to do some calculations but it's cleared here all right so it lets me uh, actually back chamfer the hole so let's take a look at a video and you're going to see uh, a couple seconds of the chamfer tool doing the top side and then you're going to watch this come out and sink down and do the bottom So that's it from here. Uh, please join me on my next Zoom mail uh, meeting. You'll be uh, getting an email very soon here. We usually meet on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. You don't have to join with video if you don't want to, but it's always fun to see everybody's uh, face. It's always nice to connect with guys in the trade, ask your questions. So uh, again, I hope you found that informative and we'll see you on the next lesson.